And how will it be when we will bring forth every nation with a witness and we bring you forth as witness against these? And when that happened, the Prophet sallallahu he said, enough. He was overwhelmed because he, Allah speaking directly to him. Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was so confident about his knowledge of, the, of Islam and in particular of the Quran that he is famously is quoted to have said that there is no one with greater knowledge of the, of the Quran. That I know where every surah, every verse was revealed in every place that it was revealed. When and where every single verse was revealed. There's no one who knows more of it than I do. And none of the companions objected to his, to his claim. Abdullah bin Mas'ud was definitely an important individual with the life of the Muslims, of the early Muslims especially. And so when we hear him say things about the Quran, then we should know that there uh, is coming from an individual who's truly informed about the Book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, about the Quran, in the Ajma Ayatim Fi Kitabillah, said the most comprehensive verse in the book of Allah is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In the Allah Yamuru bin Adli wa Isani wa Ita in the Purva, or Yanha and the Fasha in the Mukari with Babi, Yadur Nala from Jatakarun, or the Kulahi Abba, or Allah Yamu Matas Narun. Verily, Allah, He has ordered justice, goodwill and giving to those who are relatives. And he has forbidden indecency, he has forbidden transgression, indecencies, uh, and, 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 and he's, he's forbidden sin and, and, and open indecency and transgression, and transgression. 
And he admonishes you so that you would take a lesson and the remembrance of God is greater. While Allah, he knows all that you do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he orders and joins upon us justice, uh, goodwill, and giving or treat the good treatment of our relatives. Sufyan ibn Thawri said about this verse, I'm, I'm sorry, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, the famous Tabi'i, he said about this verse that justice in this verse is a reference to istiwa sarirati wa alaniya. It is, it means for one to be the same when one is in secret and one is in public. That's what the way that he saw it. Abdullah ibn Abbas reportedly said that al adl or justice means shahadat la ilaha illallah. It is to testify, the testimony that there is no God except for Allah. But Sufyan ibn Yana continues and he says about Ihsan, because Allah he enjoins not only justice upon us but, but a good will. And he said Ihsan, which, we, which I'm translating as good will, which also can be translated as excellence, he says, and takuna sariratu wa asan, asan min alariyati. He said, if for a person's um, inward state to be better or more beautiful than one's outward state, that's what is intended by Hassan in his view. But when fa'sha wa munka and takuna alariyatu wa asan min sariratu. And when Allah speaks of sin and indecency, he said, this means for one's outward state to be better than one's inward state. What you show people is better than uh, is better than what is inward. That is to say that if you are a sinful person, at least keep it to yourself. Keep it secret between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Kathir, he says of al-fawahish. The term fawahish was translates as sin, we can say. And muharramat. He said the things that are unlawful. Wal munkar ma zahara minha. And the objectionable things or the indecent things are those things that are done publicly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids both of them. As for transgression, he means to actually violate people's uh, person, among other things. And then in, in, in one hadith, the Prophet is quoted, is quoted to have say, has, has having said, مَا مَنْ ذَمْمٍ أَجْدَرَ أَنْ يُعَجِّلَ اللَّهُ عَنْ قُوبَتُهُ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا مَا عَمَا يَدَّخِرُ لِصَحِيبِهِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْبَقِي وَقَطِيعَةَ الرَّحِمِ He said, there is no sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or there is no sin that is more fitting for Allah to accelerate the punishment for it upon the person who does it. And in addition to what He uh, delays for the person in the hereafter, then transgression against people and cutting off of ties of kinship. Imam al-Asfahani, Arab al-Asfahani says about justice. He said justice is of two types. One type of justice, it is one that, that reason deems or uh, necessitates its goodness. And, and it is the type of, a type of justice which is absolute and uh, cannot be abrogated. It is, not, it is a transhistorical type of justice. When I use Rufu bil and he gives an example, and he said, an example of this is showing good or being good to those who are good to you. And, and protecting others from the harm, that your harm, when they have done, done the like. That these are things, this is trans, uh, transgenerational or transhistorical justice. But then another type of justice, he said, we know it from Scripture. There's another type of justice that we know from Scripture. Um, and in this particular regard, he goes on to say that justice is al musawat or al musawat bin mukafa. It is to actually be, uh, to show equal treatment to people. Equal treatment with regard to good and tre equal treatment with regard to the bad things that they do. In khair and for khair, and shar and for If they show you, if they show you good, then you return it with good. If they display, display evil to you, then you have the right to display evil with them or to recompense them for what they have done. But with ihsan, or well-being, or goodwill, and yuqabil al-khayr bi akthara minhu, it is for one to uh, respond to good things done to them with that which is better. To show, do something better than what, sometimes someone does something good to you, you do something better than what they did, they did to you. Well, sharr bi aqalla minhu, and if they do something bad to you, then you don't do the same thing that they've done. That is what is meant by ihsan. Is, is you know you don't respond evil for evil, even though you may have the right to do so. And Allah subhanahu wa taala is never 
uh, wrong, there's never wrong his slaves, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also is the ultimate judge of all things. Now as Muslims, we have to be very careful when we think about ideas of justice because, because Islam has its own standards for, for justice and injustice. That is to say that, that um, when we talk about justice or injustice, that there's a presumption that some right has been violated, some right has been violated, or some wrong has been done. But the author of, of right and wrong is the creator. Sometimes we make up in our minds this idea that someone has been done a wrong when in fact they may have not been done a wrong or they have actually not been done a wrong. Which realistically uh, should bring us back to a reminder of the moral uh, values that Islam has placed on human actions. That human actions are classified under certain categories. Some actions are haram, as we know. Some of them are unlawful. Some things are wajib, they're compulsory. Some things they are disliked, makrul. Some things they are recommended, mustahab. Some things they just, they have no ruling. You know, that Allah doesn't really care if you do it or you don't do it. There's some things that are just simply that way. And so any time we're dealing with people, Muslims are now Muslim, and we judge their actions, we have to make sure that we give it the right classification. And that we don't go overboard and misclassify and then and, and mistreat the particular violation that we ourselves have come uh, have, have, have attributed to any given individual. So sometimes an individual may do something like that we consider to be a crime. And not every crime is haram, right? And not everything that is a crime goes against the shara. And so we get accustomed to our culture. And so our, 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 the state will tell us that something is a crime. And so and I'm not encouraging people to commit those crimes. But I'm just saying that just because it's a crime doesn't mean that it is immoral. And sometimes some things are lawful. Doesn't mean that that makes them moral as well. So we have to be very careful about that. So, so, so when people, we hear about things that do things wrong, we have to ask ourselves first and foremost, is this individual guilty of a crime? Okay, if it's not guilty of a crime, then is he, has he done something haram? And okay, if he hasn't done something haram, has the person done something that is makrul? Is it dislike in Islam? Meaning something that if that person does it, it's not actually not sinful, but it's better for them not to do it, right? And if it's not makro, then is the person, is he guilty of a khilaf al awla? That is to say, something which is even less than makro, something that we just simply assume is, 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 that, that is the, not is the least appropriate thing to do. That there is something better that the person could have done, and the person chose something different. But the person committed no sin at all, right? Or even less than that, is it simply what we call khawarim al amurua, a violation of sort of cultural sens sensibilities? Like, for instance, like um, a man he or a, a woman sees kisses her spouse in public, right? Is it haram to do so, or it just simply goes against the sort of the cultural norms, the cultural sensibilities, yeah, among, among other things? So, 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 so we have to be very clear about those type of things when we start to talk about people being done wrong or people being victimized. It's extremely important for us to have the right classification. And, and even without naming what people have done, you should at least know what particular category their supposed crime falls underneath. Because we have to be very careful about general accusations of things that can take our mind in many different directions. That, that a person may be guilty of something inappropriate Right? And what does it inappropriate mean? What does that really mean? Well, even when we talk about things like, which is a new term that people have really grabbed onto, this idea of what we call spiritual abuse, right? Is a term that what does that really entail? That does it entail something haram? Even if you don't tell me exactly what happens, at least you, I have a right to know, is this person guilty of something haram? Or at least you should be able to name it. Is it haram? Is it makrook? Is it, is it khilaf al ola? Among other things. Because one thing we know for sure is that gossip is haram. That, that slander is haram, among so many other things. We know that those things are, are haram, without a doubt, right? But we have to be very careful when it comes to our tongue, because ultimately we're going we're gonna to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have to answer for what we have done, what we have said about people. And that in itself is not to say that people are guiltless when they do things. It doesn't mean that they're guiltless, or they haven't done things that make them, that, that, that are incriminating. But it's important for us to understand that when we decide to punish individuals, that the, the, the punishment is equal to the crime that is committed. 
that be very careful. Otherwise, it's going to be full bars. It's going to be chaos. And many of us, we see this. We know. Some of us actually know what I, I, I'm actually referring to as a matter of fact. But it leads to chaos where we're not clear what is the sort of the classification of certain action. What actually has been done? We haven't we heard about it. And so if there is no crime committed, then we really can't talk about victims. We really can't talk. If there's no, if there's no such thing as there being a victim and there's no crime, the crime has to be named. You don't have to name a victim if you don't name a crime. At least name what the crime is, right? Or if you can't name the crime, name the classification that it falls under. Name it haram, or whatever it may be. Because I think we're getting far away from the Quranic, uh, the Quranic lessons, the Quranic teachings. And so what has happened at times is that Muslims themselves have abandoned, have abandoned Quranic valuations uh, or moral judgments and have attempted, we've created new types of categories of things, new crimes, which the Islamic law in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not even crimes, right? So again, spiritual abuse, an example. Look, it was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi guilty of spiritual abuse because simply because he was a man and he was a person of authority and he made proposals to women from time to time, right? Is that, is that an example of spiritual abuse? Well, he could command his sahaba to go into battle. Is that spiritual abuse? An uh, individual in a position of authority who actually is uh, uh, using that authority to command others to do, to do things. Especially when we think about the idea of compulsion, that people have, people have the ability to resist or to, uh, to obey or, or not obey things, uh, that, that unless a person is holding a gun, a gun to your head, you can't talk about an individual lacking accountability for a type of violation that they feel was committed against them. At any rate, what's important is that this particular verse, it calls us to justice, it calls us to, to, to goodwill, it causes us, it calls us to avoid sin and to and, and from actually uh, broadcasting sin as well. And, and, and most importantly, it, it, it calls us to not transgress against other people. That we don't transgress against other people, either their persons or their their honor. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He guide us and He plant our feet firm on His path. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> إبار الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم بعض المتذكرون تذكر الله يذكركم واشكروه وعلى إذن عليه يذكركم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسمعون وأكبر الصلاة